So now that we've addressed all of the prerequisites to prepare for the hybrid deployment, we can go ahead and run the hybrid configuration wizard. What the hybrid configuration wizard is going to do is look at our on-prem active directory, extract some information from it, and use that to create the connection between the on-prem exchange org and the exchange online organization. To run the hybrid configuration wizard, we're actually going to do so from the on-prem exchange admin center. And you can see on your screen here, that's where I'm logged in. To run the hybrid configuration wizard, we select hybrid down in the left pane and then click configure. We'll be prompted to sign in to Office 365. And since I'm already authenticated, it took that information already. Once I've authenticated, I can click configure again. At this point, the hybrid configuration wizard security warning appears asking me if I want to install the application. We can go ahead and install it. And by the way, I'm doing this on my Exchange server on-prem. You can go ahead and click Run. And from here, we can work our way through the hybrid configuration wizard. We'll click Next here. And what the wizard's going to do is detect the optimal Exchange server to connect to. Now, we only have one Exchange server here, so that's what it's going to connect to. Now I'm getting a prompt here telling me that my server is unlicensed, and this is because it's a, a trial. I'm not doing anything with the server. What I'll do here is give it a license. And to do so, it's going to request a product key, and it's going to make me sign into my Office 365 account. So I've gone ahead and licensed my server, and down at the bottom, I can select the Exchange Online organization that I want to use. We're using Worldwide. We're not using China or Germany or anything. So we'll go ahead and use Office 365 Worldwide and click Next. So at this point, the configuration wizard is telling me it has my Exchange admin credentials for the on-prem environment, as well as the Exchange Online admin credentials. If I want to change these, I can do so with the change buttons, but for this demonstration, we're good. So we can go ahead and click Next. What it's going to do here is gather information from both the on-prem environment and the Office 365 environment. And once both the on-prem and Office 365 environments succeed, I can click Next. Now at this point, I'm offered a couple different options for hybrid. I can deploy a minimal hybrid or a full hybrid. Now it's telling me here the minimal hybrid is the recommended approach. However, that's not what we want to do here. I don't like that they mention recommended here. Now with a minimal hybrid, you can do a migration, but you're going to lose those rich features like the shared gal, um, calendaring, etc. And in an environment where you're going to have a period of coexistence, your users are going to expect to be able to continue using their calendars across both of the environments, both the Exchange Online Org and the on-prem environment. Once, you know, Susie moves to Office 365, she still needs to be able to see calendars and set appointments for people in the on-prem environment. So to do that, we need to do a full hybrid. Now in this box here for other options, we have the organization configuration transfer. Now what this does is performs a one-time transfer of any organization objects from the on-prem environment to Exchange Online. If we click learn more here, we can see what's covered in the organization policy transfer, or really the organization configuration transfer. Now, as you can see here, it copies quite a few policies over from the on-prem environment to Office 365. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do the organization configuration transfer. We can go ahead and click Next. And at this point, it's asking for a federation trust. It's telling me that one isn't enabled yet, but for a full hybrid, 
a Federation Trust is required. So we'll go ahead and enable the Federation Trust. Now to enable the Federation Trust, it's going to ask me here to add a text record to my shellpublishing.com public DNS. So what I'll do is I'll copy this to my clipboard here and I'll switch over to my domain manager for Shell Publishing and I'll create the text record that it's looking for. Essentially what it's doing is it's looking for me to confirm that I own the domain. So we'll save this and we'll switch back over. And then what happens here, we can check the box telling it that we've created the text record and then we can verify domain ownership. When we get to the hybrid topology screen, we're presented with two options. We can use the Exchange Classic hybrid topology or we can use the newer Exchange Modern hybrid topology. Now, while the newer Exchange Modern hybrid topology offers improved performance and easier configuration, the feature is still in preview. At the time of this course, there are still enough gotchas with the Exchange Modern hybrid topology that I'm not going to use that in this demonstration. Essentially, what the Modern hybrid topology does is allow for easier configuration of connectivity from the Exchange Online environment back to the on-prem environment. But because of the limitations and because it's in preview, there's a chance that by the time you take this course, this preview feature may have been revoked due to issues. So we'll use the Exchange Classic Hybrid topology for this demonstration. We can go ahead and click Next here. And at this point, we're prompted for an on-prem account that's used for migrations. So we'll go ahead and supply our admin account, which is basically an organizational admin. And we'll click OK. Now remember, this shell admin account isn't just a domain or enterprise admin account. It's also an administrative account for Exchange. It has the organization management permissions within the Exchange organization. So keep that in mind when you're specifying accounts for the migration. We can go ahead and click next here. And then at this point, we're presented with two options. We can either use client access and mailbox servers for secure mail transport, or we can use edge transport servers. We don't have any other mail servers in our environment. So we'll use the first option, which by the way is typical. That's generally what you'll do in a common migration. We'll go ahead and click next. And on the receive connector screen, we have to tell the hybrid configuration wizard where to create the receive connector. And we only have one server here, so we'll select exchange 01 and click next. The same thing goes for send connectors, so we'll select exchange 01. Now before clicking next, what I wanted to tell you is the receive and send connectors that the hybrid configuration wizard is creating these are used to secure mail between the on-prem environment and Office 365 and vice versa. This isn't for internet mail or anything else. This is essentially just to allow secure communication between the on-prem environment and Office 365. So we'll go ahead and click next here. And at this point, it's going to ask for a transport certificate. We already have our mail.shellpublishing.com UCC public certificate. So we'll use that one and click next. In the organization FQDN screen, we need to provide a fully qualified domain name that represents our on-prem exchange server. So we're going to call this mail.shellpublishing.com. And we can go ahead and click next. At this point, it's going to perform the organization configuration transfer. On the ready for update screen, the hybrid configuration wizard tells us that the configuration settings are now complete and that we have to click update to configure and enable those hybrid features in the on-prem environment and in the Office 365 organization.
It's also important to note here that it tells us that it's going to take several minutes for this process to complete and that we can't close this window unless we're going to try and cancel the process. So closing the window is going to cancel the process. So let's go ahead and click update here. And we can watch the process work through the hybrid initialization, the configuration. It does all of those things under the covers to connect the on-prem environment to Office 365. When the hybrid configuration wizard completes, you're presented with a congratulations screen. Now we can see here on my screen that the congratulations screen I got presented me with an HCW8110 error. If I click learn more, I can go out to Microsoft's page and see what this error is. Looking at the HCW8110, I can see that this error occurs when objects can't be copied over from the on-prem environment to Office 365 during the organization configuration transfer. So let's bounce back over and open the log file and see if we can search for error and find out what's going on. So we can see here an error does show up during the configuration process. And what it's telling me is that it was trying to run a command related to DLP policy and that the command was not recognized. It's also asking me to verify that I have correct management roles assigned to my account. Well, we know that my account is a global admin in Office 365 and that it has admin rights to the Exchange organization. We also know that I'm using an account in the on-prem environment that is an exchange administrator. What this error tells me is that the hybrid configuration wizard was having problems copying over DLP policies from the on-prem environment to Office 365. In this case, that would make sense because although it's trying to copy over any DLP policies from the on-prem environment, I don't have any DLP licensing in my Office 365 tenant. I'm only using E1 licensing. As such, I don't have access to DLP policies. Had I had E3 licensing in my on-prem environment, we'd have no issues copying any DLP policies over. So keep that in mind when you're doing a hybrid configuration and make sure that if there are on-prem DLP policies that need to come over during that organizational transfer, that the Office 365 tenant has the proper licensing to support that. In my lab here, I'm not worried about bringing over DLP policies, but I did want to show you what happens when you have a problem with that process. So for this lab here, I can simply go ahead and click close, ignoring this HCW8110 error. And with that, my hybrid configuration wizard has been successfully run, and I now have a hybrid configuration set up between my on-prem environment and Office 365. In the next lessons, we'll go through the process of confirming everything is working the way it should, and through the process of migrating mailboxes.